South African President Cyril Ramaphosa faces a headache in forming a government of national unity. He has invited opposition parties to join forces in governing the country in the wake of a fiercely contested election in which the ruling African National Congress, ANC, failed to secure a majority for the first time since the end of apartheid. However, the path to a coalition government is fraught with challenges. Deep-seated divisions among opposition parties and their differing stances on socioeconomic policies present significant hurdles to the formation of a stable and effective government. Opposition parties have reacted differently to the unity government idea. The Democratic Alliance, DA, which received over 21% of the vote, has placed constitutional protection and economic reforms at the heart of its negotiation framework. DA leaders, including federal chairperson Helen Zill, will meet on Monday to discuss their approach to the coalition talks. The DA seeks to devolve certain powers from the national to provincial governments and ensure multi-party access to the budgeting process. They also emphasize maintaining the independence of the South African Reserve Bank and outlawing cadre deployment in public service. Economic Freedom Fighters, EFF, led by Julius Malema, secured just over 9% of the vote and has vehemently rejected the idea of a coalition with the ANC. Malema has accused the ANC of arrogance and stated that the EFF is not desperate for power. The party, known for its radical economic policies, including land nationalization and wealth redistribution, stands in stark contrast to the DA's pro-business stance. Inkata Freedom Party, IFP, which garnered nearly 4% of the vote, has expressed openness to joining a national unity government but remains cautious. IFP spokesperson Kaliko Hlangwa stated that while the party is not averse to the idea, the specifics need careful consideration. Action SA party has outrightly refused to participate in coalition negotiations with the ANC, citing irreconcilable differences. Yunkanta Wisiswi party, which is led by former President Jacob Zuma, is the latest to enter negotiations after initially hesitating. The party has raised concerns about voting irregularities and threatened to boycott Parliament's first sitting. South Africa's last government of national unity was formed after the country's first democratic election in 1994, led by Nelson Mandela. Despite winning nearly 63% of the vote, the ANC included opposition parties to foster national reconciliation. The current situation is different, as the ANC is forced into coalition due to its diminished electoral performance. The outcome of these negotiations is crucial for South Africa's political stability and economic prospects. The markets are closely monitoring the situation, anticipating how the new government will address pressing issues such as economic inequality, unemployment, and corruption. The DA has proposed several economic reforms, including supporting President Ramaphosa's Operation Voland Lila, unbundling ESCOM, and reforming mineral rights and land ownership policies. These proposals aim to reduce the budget deficit and stimulate sustainable economic growth. The formation of a coalition government in South Africa presents a complex challenge, with opposition parties deeply divided on key issues. The ANC's proposal for a government of national unity seeks to bring stability, but achieving consensus among diverse political factions will require delicate negotiations and significant compromises. The coming weeks will be critical in determining the future political landscape of South Africa.